it uses the same algorithm that it uses to calculate the gamut for the graph. It's going to open up this set here. But a number of graphing packages graph it as if it were inside a cube. In fact, I've talked to the guy at Monaco that wrote that, and he's acknowledged that they had a problem with it. There are some unique things within this tool. For instance, you can drag tags between profiles. It's something as simple as saying, well, I really like the proofing part of this profile, but I like the way this profile prints. We're putting values through the profile. The numbers above the target, the negative 1.4 and 5.9 as it is there, those are the AB values that resulted. So they were supposed to be 0, 0, but they're not. That'll tell you how much your neutrals are wandering all over the place. There's some LAB values on the left, so I can graph that list of color, and I can zoom in on it. It's, it's got an interesting little hook at the bottom, which sometimes you get a real barber pole effect as it winds its way up a neutral axis. It's the sign of a profile that's not doing a particularly good job. This back calculates the dot cane out of the profile. It can compare the CMYK values produced on profiles side by side. You don't always get the total link you asked for from the profiling application. And, uh, let's talk about the worksheet. You know, see how that image is affected as it moves through your workflow. As you'll note that the color of those RGB tags is significantly different than the color of the RGB tags for the Corbis RGB profile on the left. And that is what is being shown in the delta E here. So you can see below the image, it's a source RGB changing to LAB. And there's a way of doing that that's faster and a little easier as well. I'm going to open up a new one. And I just click and drag, make sure the crosses are over the right spots, let go, and it pulls all those colors out. I can save the RGB and LEB values, or only the RGB, or only the LEB, whatever you want to get out of there. So it's a way of quickly grabbing a set of colors out of an image and graphing it. And when you graph a delta E column, what are you graphing? Well, you're graphing vectors. The region of the image that I was interested in, in this case, flesh tones, kind of like Excel, I could sort the column based on the L value. And LCH allows me to sort by chroma, for instance, so I can have the most saturated or the least saturated. Go back into the grapher, and it will have selected all of those data points. Let's evaluate a proofing system. This is a quick way of doing a round trip evaluation of how well this system is going to do. Statistically summarize basically all the delta E value. So if I say link, we see we're going from swap TR001 down to the iris. Uh, I want a device link profile, and I want usually a fairly high resolution, 25 by 25 or maybe 33 by 33. So ColorThink now gives us the ability to save an abstract profile, which can contain transformations. And that would give me the ability to basically encapsulate the soft proofing effect of that five channel profile into an abstract profile. Now the guide does a whole bunch of different things, including what I've just done for the last two hours, and that is help you walk through different functions in ColorThink. I can say create a profile, I can evaluate them, I can compare two profiles, and it really does walk things through. It goes through the whole process of laying everything out, and you are effectively doing fast, easy, soft proofing of five, six, seven channel profiles, or even four channel, doesn't really matter, in Photoshop without any plugins and without any confusion. It's part tutorial, part automator, part wizard. It's sort of all of them. Because at the pro level tool, what I want to do is give people a whole batch of things that they can use and learn from and, and that kind of thing.